I'm descending into madness. Anyway, hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the BNR stream. It is my stream, not yours. It's mine. Sucks the suck. I don't I don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, my name is Beardo, and you may remember me from this stream. Today is the 28th of February, 2022. It is the end of summer for, for some, and it's the beginning of autumn for, for some. And if you're not in the Southern Hemisphere, then you're wishing that it went a bit hotter, in which case, good news, it's getting hotter. Uh, so yeah, lots of crazy weather going around, I'll tell you that. Uh, we got floods in Queensland, that's a bit of a doozy, so hope you guys are staying safe, and of course, uh, elephant in the room, the uh, various geopolitical situations that arose in the last, uh, in the last week, we'll just say, um, so all I'll say is I got mates who are on both sides of the engagement, and I will just say stay safe, uh, and that's about it. I don't really even know anything going on, man, so I'm gonna leave that uh, to, to the experts. But there's one thing I do know about, and that's a lot of people played Elden Ring, but even better, how about I start up Quake, because instead of talking about nothing, uh, let's, whoop, hold on, I, I, I started streaming the audio twice, sorry, my bad. Here we go, Wah! Look at that, it's Quake, but we're not just playing just any Quake, I'm playing the... Bethesda Net. Let's go. New game. The Dissolution of Eternity. This is the second expansion pack. I didn't even realize both of these came out in like oh, two weeks apart in March of 1997. Uh, so this expansion pack is developed by Rogue Entertainment. You may remember them for being the developers of Strife. I know. That's a game I actually played on my channel. Uh, they also worked on um, American McGee's Alice later on down the line. And then they basically turned it to Nerve Software. Nerve? Nerve Entertainment? They, they, they did some more stuff later on. So they didn't completely remove themselves from, from mid-related uh, goodies. So we start off with a giant Quake logo in the sky. Always good. There's three difficulties. We've got easy, normal, and hard. I want to show how stupid the hard difficulty is. So, not like Quake, where like you've just got to do a jump. It's like you got a bridge and it shakes. I'm not touching the the controls, by the way. It is absolutely absurdly annoying to get there. If you want to go for hard, that is. I don't want to go for hard, but sure. Uh, so I'm just gonna go for normal. We'll do a casual run. I also want to show off how to unlock the nightmare difficulty when we start off. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go over here and you've got a little target. Two more to go. Okay. So now you go around the back here. Okay. And now we go back to the center. This will take you back out to the portal. So right, right back to the top. But if you look just a little, a little bit behind it, there it is. Cheeky right there little sequence is complete and if you do that and if you stand ne next to the oh, cool. if you stand here you'll be sucked up to the top where you can then select the nightmare difficulty that's if you want to be the kind of guy who picks nightmare I don't I'm, I'm just gonna play normal uh, so this expansion consists of two episodes uh, they're both you can you can play either of them so good on them uh, the first episode Hell's Fortress let's start off uh, this expansion also has no secret levels. It's just, I'm gonna play 15 levels back to back, and that's about it. That's really all to it. But you'll see some of the cool stuff that they do in it. So we start off with the night enemies. So actually, I believe there's gonna be a lot of night enemies to start off. Um, so we start off in the Deviant's Domain. There's still a good handful of secrets that this expansion has. Like, these guys aren't strangers to making, um, I guess, in tech levels. But... Maybe they're strangers to the Quake style. Uh, I don't know though. Because these guys, like, they're not like... I mean, they work right next to the id, folks. That's what I love as well, is like... You'd have these smaller, differently named teams, even though... 
you know, you're in the same, like, not even the same company, the same, like, floor of the, the building. It's like, um, Insomniac and Naughty Dog, right next to each other. And that's why there's a lot of similarities between their games, um. But nowadays, you get a lot of, like, EA, uh, like, Poland 2, 8? I don't know what I mean. I'm going with Poland. Poland came to mind. Uh, but you know what I mean? It's like, there's a lot of... Uh, different studios that will work on the same game, first of all. That's that's one catch with the modern games. And then two, you've got a lot of like different devs on the same floor. And I think the, the, the quick example, and I might as well mention this one today. Uh, so, there's new Pokemon stuff that got announced uh, like a day ago. And uh, that Pokemon stuff is kind of interesting because... Uh, there's a new Game Freak mainline Pokemon series game. The ninth generation, as they've said, uh, they've shown off a new set of three starters, so, uh, there's, there's a new trainer type, and, uh, it's coming out 2020! This year! Pokemon Legends Arceus, the last Game Freak Pokemon game, came out last month. January. Uh, that is, because it's almost March. Um, yeah! On top of that, the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC came out November 2020. It's very scary how many games are coming out of Game Freak. I think what really, like, is happening is that there is a, like, certainly, uh, parallel teams at Game Freak. Uh, there we go, that's that draw bridge. There's some parallel teams at Game Freak because no way would, like, they just, like, finish one bit and they jump onto the next bit. Sometimes you get a, um, uh, also a rolling development team where you'd have people do engine work in the background. And actually, that's what it did to some degree as well. You'd have rolling engine work going on in the back. At some point, they go, cut, that's it. That's what's ending up as our engine for the game. And then they work on that for the next game. Level designers and artists work on that for the next game. Actually, artists are doing whatever they want. Um, for the next one, I'll talk about this new weapon in a moment. And then uh, once they finish that game, the engine people have already made, like, something quite spectacular. So Doom 2 came out just when, or rather, was being made just, like, while the Quake engine was still kind of teething a little bit. Um, and then when Quake 2 was, sorry, when Doom 2 was done, Quake was ready. Let's shoot this. And there you go, low as a bridge. Um, <laughs> I might as well mention this weapon. So this expansion, what it does is that it actually adds alternate um, ammo types for various weapons. So not only is there the uh, the nail gun, but there's also lava nails for the nail gun. Uh, and uh, they don't replace the old ammo. Uh, so that means you end up getting, I think, a, a more interesting weapon variety than in, uh, in the other expansion. You'll see some more of the weapons later on. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's maybe how Game Freak are doing it. Um, one thing I'm awfully concerned about in the trailer is the performance looks very shaky. That does, um, I think the, the clear thing for me is they did a shot of uh, some windmills, and you can easily see that the, not the front windmill, but the windmills behind the front. The boat has been released! Woo! Um, the windmills behind the front were all uh, animating at a lower frame rate, and that seems like an optimization technique to, um, you know, to say frame rate. It's going, oh, this, um, this thing is not animating that much. Focusing on it as part of the trailer, at least at, like, it was a sky shot as well. There wasn't anything else to look at. It's a bit of an odd one. I'm very, very confused, Game Freak. Very confused. Um, they showed off a Pokemon Legends update. It was just an update, not actually a um, paid content. Um, with an alarming amount of Munchlax, so that's always good. And uh, other than that, they showed off... A couple of other things for games that I don't play. I don't play the puzzle game, I don't play Pokemon Go, I don't play Pokemon uh, Masters, is that the other phone one? Um, and then uh, Unite, which is the MOBA. They're really rocking a lot of Pokemon games right now. I'm amazed that like in 15 minutes you can talk about six different Pokemon games like that. Oh, seven, sorry, because they, there's a mystery gift kind of thing for... Um, Brilliant Diamond as well. It's like, yeah, geez. At the very least, Brilliant Diamond was not made by Game Freak. At least I can look at that and go, okay, yeah. Like, at least I didn't do that. But like, geez, are we actually going to have three RPG-esque 
Pokemon experiences released, like, in, in the 12 months? That's really bizarre. Activated the drawbridge. So I have spoken nothing about this level, but I hope that you've seen how the level's functioning. And also, I love how this drawbridge does not come up for a, for a hot second. I don't know what's going on here, man. I didn't even find any of the secrets. I know of one of the secrets, and that's just in the water. It's poop water, but it does have a bio suit in the poop water, which is kind of neat. And uh, this lets you swim all the way back down to where the boat's chilling as well. That's kind of neat. Uh, that opens up once you get on the boat as well, so you can't just cheat your way over to the boat. You have to work your way through the level. Other than that, though, that's the end of the level. Uh, we shall continue on. So, to the Dread Portal. We start off... Uh, I, I love how if you're on hard, there's a shambler in that cage. Like, it's a, it's a good mean. And you have to kill it in order to continue. They've also got this interesting, like, water area. Where you can see that there's a key. And a button. Which moves back. That's not a key, that's a quad damage. You know what, I'll take the quad damage. Any day of the week, though. Run up here. Bonk. Bonk. Lots of buttons all over the place. Broke my legs as well. Uh, so yeah, so the obvious uh, topic of the week is uh, Elden Ring. I've not played Elden Ring. I've, I've been a bit of a, a lukewarm Dark Souls guy, where it's like, I see why people like it. And I actually kind of, like, there's bits of it I do really like, and especially as someone whose favorite game is Metroid Prime, there's a lot of bits of Metroid Prime that I see in, um, in Dark Souls. And, uh... But there's a few, there's a handful of, like, loud, aggravating bits to me. So the bit that I particularly, like, struggle with, and I think I might have mentioned this on other streams, but I'll, I'll mention it again. Dark Souls is... really obnoxious. I find, and, and this is when people say, get good, and I'm like, my problem is, I don't have infinite time, and Dark Souls certainly loves to waste my time in the, in the effort of getting good, but it's also like, it's a long game, given that I keep struggling, and I know that's, that really sounds like, bad, but it's like, I know that if I sit down and I grind, th like, souls enough, and I can level up my souls, or with the souls, I'll eventually be able to just, like, sat win things. I also know that if I, um... If I keep throwing myself at the boss, eventually I'll learn his patterns enough. I'll learn how to... how the patterns work. I don't know what exactly triggered that secret area, but you know what, I'll take it. Um... This is a... Oh, I there. Um, I know that eventually I'll win. And that seems to work out fine for most of the bosses. But now I'm at a boss called Ornstein and Smog. I, 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 I don't know the name off the top of my head. It's been, I, I checked my save file. It was like mid 2016, the last time I played. So that was five and a half years ago. Um, it was right before Dark Souls 3, I think, came out. Um, and uh, that boss absolutely crushed me. And my biggest issue is that there's no real experience with fighting two. Well, it's not even fighting two enemies, because I can do the two, like, the first stage where you fight one of two enemies, up to you. The other one then becomes big and super duper strong. And, uh, it's at that point that, like, I struggle really hard. Um, I feel like I could keep attempting it, but I also realize as well, I've got, um, an SS Flask plus two. And I realize that... Oh. That's a fun bit of level. Oh, it's happening twice. Oh, wait, I should have been writing that. Ooh, wait a minute, hold on. This feels like an actual big secret as well. Um, yeah, I feel like if, if I had enough time, I'd go for it. But my issue, I guess, at the time was I was at 25 hours and I felt quite tired. Uh, playing the game, and I just kind of stopped. I just, I was just like, this boss has taken a bit too long. And I just never really continued after that. Um, one bit that I, 
kind of hate is that there's this, like, community reaction to getting good at the game. The game is hard. It's punishing as well. Like, when people say it's fair, it's like, oh, it's, it's pretty deterministic, I'd say. Like, if I... Given, given enough skill, you can do it. There's no, like, random chance. You're not, you're not relying on luck to get things done, for the most part. Um... This is definitely a level. It kind of circles around to a lot of, lot of spots, but... Uh... Here we go. Grenade launcher. I've been wanting one of these for all my life. Oh, gosh. Here's a new enemy. Can I, can I trigger one right now? Yeah, it's a, it's a sword. The sword swing at you. And then the swords just drop when you kill them. Uh, that is killing them. You uh, uh, saw the number go up, but it's just like, hmm, that's a... That's an enemy. This expansion has a lot of, like, kind of interesting enemies. <laughs> we'll just say with that. Um, generally, the reviews liked this one a bit more, but they also said it's oddly harder. And I feel like some of the level design is a bit kind of meaner and tighter as well. Um, like that, for example. There's nothing you can do about this guy other than, like, move him up to the platform. <laughs> never, never take him back down. Okay, cool. Cool. But now I've got the key, so... Uh... But yeah. Yeah. Now, I'd also like to say, I only ever played the original Dark Souls. I also never played it with DS Fix. Uh, I mentioned the Estus Flash thing. I was only at plus two. I've seen people be like, hey, at that point in the game I've got plus eight. And I've also, like... The stats are not actually... I feel like I had grinded a fair bit at that point. But what I noticed is that when I went to heal, I wouldn't heal all my health. A higher level Essence Flask gives you higher healing of your base total. Of your, of your, sorry, not your base total, but like, when your health is larger, you can heal more. And so people generally go, well, you should have as much health as an Essence Flask heals. Or something along the lines, maybe like a little bit of wiggle room. To the next level, the Judgment Call. Um, and uh, for me, yeah, like, my Essence Flask wouldn't heal it would heal maybe 60% of my health, but that becomes a bit of an issue when the boss, say, hits you for, um, I'm trying to figure out the math in my head. At least, like, let's say 81% of your health. So now you're on 19% of your health, you heal, and now you're on 79% of your health, which means the boss can kill you. And that's a, that's a bit of an issue. So, um, now the SS Flask upgrades are supposed to be secrets. I don't really know where they are. I'm... I'm gonna have to wiki this game. Is that a bad thing? I feel like that get good mentality kind of implies that you shouldn't be looking things up. You should be like learning from experience, but there's a lot of hidden and there's a lot of cryptic I felt with that game. So now I've been ripping on the game. The strength of the game is like, okay, legit, like it's very organic. It's very like, you know, you will discover things. You like deaths are punishing. But they're totally not permanent. Um, you can you can always walk from uh, you know you you'll always respawn where you where you want it to be. Uh, you're always uh, what am I doing down here? I guess I could go through this door. Oh, that's a wall texture. That does still reveal secrets. Cool. Oh, I should be shooting these guys with the. Oh, that's the new that's the new grenade as well. Let's not burn my new grenade. Uh, for reference, the new grenade type is like a cluster grenade. It's very neat. You don't get too much ammo out of it, but it's kind of neat. It feels kind of overkill. Like, you can just use the regular grenades for, you know, to the cows on home. Uh, it's a very mean enemy placement up there. They really want me to use this, don't they? Pretty good, I'll tell you that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like... Um, I like the way that, uh, you know, you learn through combat. It's... And it's punishing at first, but it's actually like you can easily learn. What my issue, I guess, is that there's points when it gets very, very annoying. The bosses in particular is where it's really at. 
And sometimes the enemy placements. Sometimes the enemy placements are really, really, really tough. But I find generally it's the bosses. And there's a lot of bosses in the game. And that's that's okay, but it's just like, again, there's a bit of a you know how how much difficulty is too much? And uh I sometimes find Dark Souls is uh riding it too close. Um uh, I also will say that visually it's it's got its bits actually. It's 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 definitely a bizarre looking game on PC where the performance is locked to 72030, but uh I like the idea of like how a lot of the areas are just directly connected. You'll just wander from one area into another, no loading screen, no nothing. The only reason why you know you've gone into another area is because the color palette changed and a uh, bit of text appeared on the screen. Oh yeah, we've got these eels as well. I'm um, eel. Everyone loves eels, don't they? I prefer them to piranhas. They're a more fun enemy because they slither around. And they're not too big. I'm glad I just ran that instead of like properly solving it like a human being. <laughs> Good thing they don't open it back up on you. I think they actually do want me to do a grenade jump here. How about let's do it with a spirit? There you go. Look at that. So this is the, uh, the multi-rockets. I didn't need to do the grenade jump, I guess. So the multi-rockets, for reference as well, like, just spot the new and the old model right here. Uh, but the multi-rockets are great because, uh, it fires, like, four rockets. And yeah, they, they do as much damage as the rockets usually do, so... That's a powerful boy. So I wandered around this whole bit just to get one key as well. So now I will go back out to the center room. And finally activate this one key. That was 40 of the 72 enemies as well. Let's use this in good practice. But I could also just use, you know, regular rockets as well. It feels kind of weird using the rockets against the space guys. Because they never got, like, rocket action in the, uh, in the base game, so... Anyway, that's my rip on, on Dark Souls. Point is, my experience with Dark Souls is pretty minimal, and it's not, like, like, universally positive. Dark Souls is a weird franchise where I feel like the, e the, um, not the ethos, but the spirit of it lives more than the, the actual game itself. Uh, because suddenly, I don't know how exactly Dark Souls became mainstream. I remember Demon's Souls getting a little bit of attention before Dark Souls came out. And then Dark Souls became that game where it's like, oh dude, you can't beat Dark Souls. Like that kind of like, challenge yourself kind of game. In the same way that like in some circles you'd have like a, a Kaizo <laughs> would be the um, like Kaizo Mario would be the the quality or the, the level of like how skilled you were. Which is weird because Kaizo Mario is one where usually people just abuse safe states because it's, it's very brutal. Um, Dark Souls is tough. It's not Kaizo, but it's it's tough. Um, look at the more of these lava pistols. You can tell it's lava pistols, sorry, lava uh, bullets because it's got um, an arrow on it. Are these guys going to walk out in front of the... I'm just going to... Oh. <laughs> Fine, I'll, I'll, I'll put them out. Did just spawn another one of them? Who knows? Down I go. Oh, what? Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Is that a little see-through wall? Nice. Good level design right there. Oh, we've got more nails. Okay. Uh, so let's let's enter Elden Ring. Let's let's enter this space. I don't have too much to say about Elden Ring the game, mostly because I haven't played it. What I feel like I could have done is 
played it, I guess, but I'm also like, well, there's a couple of things that stopped me. One, I I pre-ordered um, Watch Dogs way back when. I now never pre-ordered games day one, for obvious reasons. Elden Ring has that reason. It's a bizarrely unpopular opinion, apparently. Because, like, uh, legit, if you're on if you're on Steam, you would have seen that initial review score to be 60% positive. You would have seen it to be, like, it was pretty bad. It's now back up to, I think, 74%. Is this the level? The Cave of Death. Is this the level I'm thinking of? There's one level in this expansion that's just... Oh. Oh. It might be this level. I'll know it when I get to it, but it's... Oh, it's absolutely absurd. Like, <laughs> who designed this? A bit of that going on as well. The enemies just spawning in front of you. I think it is this level. I think it is this level. You got a little rumbly. Is it just rumbly for the sake of being rumbly? There's nothing really to it. Find the three buttons. It is this area. I don't know if it's going to be this bad on um on hard, but it's like know how there's a lot of like the the zombies. And every time you hit a button, I believe it spawns something on you. So you're dealing with all these guys, and there's one wall that's just completely black, and it eventually rises up as well. Like it figures it out. I think. It's, it's a very bizarre level. It almost looks non-Euclidean, but I swear it is. They didn't do the non-non-Euclidean. I don't even know what's going on over here. And you've got a little wall that you can shoot as well. Maybe that raised the wall over here? It did. There you go. I'll probably need this invisibility. This will be quite useful. So there's a uh, switch 2 and switch 3 I think is over here. Um... So, yeah, let, let me talk about Elden Ring in terms of the guy who's not, like, wanting to really play the game kind of perspective. Because I feel like this is a bit of an interesting one. Um, so I've got a bunch of mates, and they definitely hyped Elden Ring uh, internally. I don't think they... They definitely were like, oh, i got to prep myself, I've got to play Dark Souls 3 again. That was the one that, uh, I think they played, maybe the original showed up. Um, I thought there'd be more enemies. Maybe it's back through here. Maybe it's not on this difficulty. I remember that being incredibly worse. Hmm. The rumbling is horrendous though, because you can see I'm not standing still. It just, it never ends. Uh, so the underwater path is now open. I love this little ledge here as well, because there's another ledge there. Uh, but there's your underwater path. With eels, of course. Uh, so they hype themselves up. The mates hype themselves up to play Dark Souls. And then Elden Ring came out, and they were like, I'm taking uh, time off. Play Elden Ring day one. And they played it, and they enjoyed it. I'm, I, I can safely at least say that, like, whatever I say about Elden Ring, like, the worst I can say is it's consistently, like, imperfectly running in various parts. Uh, and, uh, like, that sounds, that sounds kind of weird, but, like, hear me out. So, the performance issues on PC in particular that I see are various sections and bosses um, have... Uh, like this stuttering, this significant, noticeable stuttering. The significant, noticeable stuttering is, uh, oh, hi there. Uh, the significant, noticeable stuttering is oddly only in, like, those parts, and only in parts that don't particularly look like they're intensive. Keep hands and feet inside the car, here we go. Woo! You could actually bail if you wanted to as well and get the, the little goodies. There we go. It's very neat. I like. I do like a good carriage section. 
perhaps this is what Half-Life was about. It pops you off here. Uh, obviously, you know how level designers be like, can you actually shoot these? No, they didn't do that. Hexen 2's got a lot of destructible terrain, but not this game, I guess. Same engine, that's why I mention it. Um, oh, down the pit. Oh. Uh, so yeah, so the, the stuttering happens in, in very, very particular spots. But, from what I've been reading, seeing, a lot of people are experiencing those stutters at those particular spots. But, it's oddly, like... We've hit like a bit of a, a two, you know, two opinion culture. Either something sucks or something is amazing. There's no in between. This game got 10 out of 10s. Polygon gave it 10 out of 10. Kotaku gave it 10 out of 10. Therefore, this game must be amazing. And if you don't agree to that, then you're either uh, a nanny, a nanny naysayer. I don't know what the term is. Or you're, uh, you know, you're just trolling or something like that. Um, it's like, oh, just let people enjoy it and have fun. My, I guess, issue, and this is this is one where it's like, like, hear me out. I feel like the game is still, from what I hear, rather good. I don't quite know if it will be a game for me. I don't, I don't quite know if it will be for that. But for the people who are enjoying it, it's definitely you know living up to their expectations. Uh, I, I think I go back. Everyone loves a little pentagram, lightning. Hit the button. The lift is now active. Whoop. Hit the button. The lift is now active again. Everyone likes a lightning weapon. Always good. Is that guy above me? Or he's under me? Where does everyone keep coming from? They keep reappearing in places. Back into the pipe. Uh, some fairly neat levels, but yeah, it's definitely like, oh, it's a bit of, bit of some interesting mazy-like environments, although it's not too confusing. Well, as long as I don't, like, knock the platform there, they're knocking the platforms out under me. Cool, jump into the tube to exit. Mwah! There you go, cool level. The Towers of Wrath, or Wrath. Uh... So, yeah, so, internet discussions, polarizing, we'll say that. You're I, you either love the game or you're a no, no good nanny naysayer. Um, what I find is that it's a bit unhelpful, because there is this issue circulating about, and I keep seeing a lot of people shutting it down online. They're basically going, hey, like, I've had no issues, so your computer must be bad. And then people will go, no, I've got a 3090 Ti and a 5950X and I experience the issues. And then they go, nah, you, like, you're, you've you just got, like, too many things running in the back. Or at some point they start saying, like, this is, you know, you're just acting out of malice, which is weird because it's like, here's a multi-million dollar video game. Uh, like, I don't really know what you're trying to do beyond, like, a dip for sales? Maybe. It's, it's, it's controlled, controlled opposite, not controlled opposition. What's the phrase I'm looking for? Where it's like, you're a company and you, like, give bit bad PR for someone else's company. Like, something like that. It's like, oh, I actually work for Sega and I was hired to write bad stuff about Dark Souls or something like that. Um, do people actually- I swear, like, if people, like... I feel like that happens a lot nowadays, but you can't attribute it to anything. Like, cause it's so hard to trace, like, random accounts online. Yeah. Like, I can- I can make an account. And then say bad stuff about my competitors, and I don't think anyone would know. And this is a very incriminating thing if, uh, if uh, anyone actually found out. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. It's like, the internet's a crazy place. And honestly, a lot of people will say, like, everything has been said on the internet. It's very hard to be the first person to say anything. Uh... Okay. I think it's, Might be a bit disappointing how little I've used the, the, the little super weapons, but legit. Not had too much need, but still, it's good fun. There's a lot of ammo, I'll tell you that. I love this this rocket launcher though, it's absolutely absurd. The grenade launcher is harder to use. I'm not exactly as big a fan of it. Can I like 
Okay, I can just get that. Oh, hi there. What did that open up? Who knows? Press the button. Did I nearly get crushed or just... I don't know what's going on there. Ah! I broke my legs. Yeah, so... So anyway, so helpful discussion. So, let's just say that, yeah, okay, the game is not a perfect port. It's really not a perfect port. I think that's quite obvious. Um, but it is also in very, very fixed spots. And I think that's something that we should mention. Is that, why is this happening? I feel like that should help, you know, people figure out what exactly is going wrong with a, you know, with the game. Maybe as well if there's logs or other kinds of performance metrics. Maybe as well if people could benchmark and be able to share the benchmarks. That's the biggest reason how people can fix these kinds of games is if they can, one, talk about it without a... without a bit of taboo nature come up. That's an awkwardly delayed uh, door. Oh, hi there. It's a bit of raining down off the ceiling on this one. Uh, so there's that. Uh, there's the negative review bombs as well. I feel like you, like, uh, and as well, when things are day one, you run into this like bit of bias where all the people who are probably talking about it, a lot of people are people who have had these issues. It's been a deal breaker for them, and they're now venting their frustrations because, hey, listen, if I bought a $90 game and it's just like stirring to the extreme, and for some people that, you know, that is their extreme, they've met their extreme. Bit of trapped cage work here. Is he? Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, for some people that is their extreme, and I feel like, you know, you can respect that for some people it's too much. Um, just come down, there it is. Um, do I even exit out this way? I don't think I do. There's this lift, and that puts me just on this, like, upper... Oh, okay, this door opens. Having a bit of a swim. Oh my gosh, lots of pipes. It's a... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so all I can say is, like, the day one crowd is people mostly venting frustrations or avidly defending things for, uh, to justify their purchases. I am about to fall down here, instead of continuing on. And now I'm back in the starting room. Cool. Cool. Good level design. Should I get that guy over there? Sure. I wonder how you get over there. Doesn't look like shooting the button, does it? So, hmm, who knows? Alright, off we go. Wah! I've done it again. I've hit the, the bit and it's trying to push me into the wall only to not... Only to not push me into the wall. Done. Uh, so, anyway, what do I hear about the game? Yeah, the game is good. The game is quite good. I've still got, like, bits on how the open world really works out. Um, but from what people are saying, it's like, well, it's Dark Souls and a bit more forgiving. And that's a, actually, that's a, that's a nice to have. Because that's my biggest issue with uh, Dark Souls. Wasting my time. On the other hand, it's an open world game. And I feel like they're all designed to waste my time. Let's just add a bajillion collectibles. You know, that kind of stuff. Ah, the perfect enemy for the multi-rockets. Three, four, five. Five multi-rockets. Do they make two of them appear? Yeah, they do make two of them. Looks like you got multi-rockets. It doesn't matter. It's too good. It's way too good. Apparently that's a secret. Alright, got the key. Chucked out. Right back towards the center. They are annihilated. You are now also annihilated. Good day, sir. I believe the lava uh, nails just do like double damage. It's so nice. 
that also does mean like a kind of interesting in this uh, expansion where the um like the enemy time to kill is a lot quicker and they chuck more enemies at you in in closer encounters press the button and uh it lowers a little spiky thing to which it then shoots some lightning which opens a door of course why would it not And obviously no shotgun expansion, because why would you want that? Why would you want the shotgun to be better? You don't have to have it better. You just need everything else better. Including this! Uh, the Thunderbolt shoots like these little plasma things. It's a... Uh... Oh boy, it's a doozy. Uh, and that's its own ammo again. Not that little book just sitting there. Oh. I guess the one thing is that they've done a bit of an odd mixture of the the marine enemies and uh, every other enemy. Hi there. Let's see if I can get him with uh, this. I would love to also get him on the throne there, but you can just... Didn't really take too much damage from that, did he? Oh well. Anyway, out I go. So now to the Temple of Pain. Up we go. Oop. It's a very different aesthetic going on now. Chilling over here, okay. Uh, but yeah, I I feel like uh, it's mostly that. It's it's that day one discussion. I personally just don't like getting burned on day one, and that's why, like, as much as everyone will hype this game, I honestly feel like a lot of game best games of all time, it kind of dies off. I mean, at, the Donkey's new vid really highlighted to me. It's like, oh yeah. Horizon Forbidden West came out last week. That game came out to very glowing reviews, obviously not 10 out of 10s littered across the board, but The Last of Us Part 2 had glowing 10s across the board. Breath of the Wild had glowing 10s across the board. Red Dead Redemption 2 was in the same boat. Um, I remember Bioshock Infinite got very, very high praise, maybe not 10s. There's a lot of like games where we're in the 9s as well. Uh, and it's just like, a GTA 5 for example, that's another one. And it's like, after a while, a lot of these best games of all time start to linger down a little bit. They're still great games. But the hype does die down a bit. And I wonder if it is because all these game uh, review sites give things a 10. They're, they're really like, maxing out every, you know, every score. I, I did a look up as well. GameSpot has 20... One or maybe it's 22 now. I'm gonna say it's 21 now. Games that they've given a 10 out of 10. 14 of those came out in 2015 or later. They gave seven 10 out of 10s for like 20 something years of publication. I think they were found in 96, so 18 years of publication. And then suddenly there's so many 10 out of 10s. I'm not really too sure what changed in terms of, I guess, how you do things, but if anything, I would have imagined the 10 out of 10 to be a bit more strict, especially when you're in the realm of uh, microtransaction games, games as a service, um, games with horrendous DLC models, uh, games that rely heavily on community feedback. What is going on over here as well? Oh my gosh, that is an amazing secret. And I fell down. But like, did you see that? It was like, there's a little ledge there, so I was like, oh, okay. And then, oh, I'll do it again. I'll do it again, lad. There we go, it's a little ledge there, and then you get up. Oh my gosh. Yep, 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 At some point, I'm just gonna concede and rocket jump it. Okay. Save, whoop, 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 whoop. Look at that. That's amazing. It gets very dark up here for some reason. Look at that. <laughs> cool. See, I'm gonna need those, because no secret levels means you're gonna think I didn't really achieve any secrets, but no, no, no. I've, 
I know I found a couple. I wouldn't even say I know them. I'm just like kind of uncovering them. Bit of plasma bullets, why not? Look at that, it's the end of the level already. Obvi yeah, it's obviously the key that I don't have though. Uh, I don't even think you can get that until a bit later. But they give you a key now, so it's not the key though. There's never been room keys yet. You heard that. You heard that noise. You know exactly what's in for me near the end of this level. There's no horn of summoning though in this one, I'll tell you that. I miss it. Well, that's a, that's a fun corner. Um, but yeah, these review sites, like... I remember, and I'm gonna rip on Breath of the Wild. Also, yeah, here's a new enemy. It's the green blobs. Also, you get an anti-grab belt, which might actually be an anti-power. You jump up, and you just keep going, and at some point you fall down, but it might be kind of bad, because... Sometimes you want to actually be on the ground, so you can move. Like right now, oh, I guess that's okay, but sometimes you can't steer while you're in the air. And I'm just hearing those guys everywhere. So uh, here's another new enemy. It's a guy, he fires effectively vor bullets that are even worse. And they've given you this anti-grav thing the moment you've come across them. Let's see, we got Pestilence, Death, War, Famine. And I'm just jumping at it. Cool. Only four deadly sins though, you don't need all of them. But yeah, no, I hate the anti-grav. It's neat in theory, but like, oh. Oh, it's hard in practice. It's actually really annoying in practice. There's a bunch of dudes in there. A bunch of bouncy dudes. Uh, yeah, I think IGN might be in a similar boat with how many 10 out of 10s they've given. There's bound to be other review sites as well. Um, like, you know, can we, can we do like minor props to Polygon for getting rid of the review score? Like, minor props. They leaked the Fallout 4 scripts. I don't know if they should be trusted a ton, but they get minor props. Um, oh man, okay. I mean, I've got the key, I guess I can exit the level. I guess if they keep spawning enemies on the way to the key door. That's a regular one as well. Which is weird, because like, yeah, I'm technically at the end of the level. That was a bit of a weird way to end the level, but sure, I'll accept it. Uh, Tomb of the Overlord, I believe, I think off the top of my head, this is the last level of the first episode. Just two episodes, by the way, so it's, it's not an absolute, like, long expansion. It might be a little shorter, actually. Blame the lack of secret levels. Obviously, got to have lots of zombies, because what kind of good level doesn't have zombies? Uh, yeah, I never know really how to feel about the glowing 10 out of 10s anymore. Because, like, on top of that, like, people have still said there's weird issues with Elden Ring. People have said there's weird, like, pacing issues sometimes. Uh, the idea of, like, coming across a boss that's too strong, and you only really know by trial and erroring into him. Uh, I've heard that's just like a complaint. Uh, obviously the performance degradations on PC, which kind of amazed that like, did the reviewers like not catch it? Because I swear like at least, at least half of them should have. The figures I've seen is like three quarters of people notice that they've even had problems and sometimes crashes. It's not, it's not the worst. It's, uh, you can still just like load back into the game and kind of continue and it usually doesn't crash a second time. Uh, that, that's usually the killer, when you trigger the same crash twice. Um, uh, so this is a button lift one. There he is, little poison man. Absolutely hate him, he just, he just launches stuff and is an absolute jerk. This is a... This is an area. Oh, hi there. So you gotta hit the switches. Give him a hug. I feel like he's safer when he's giving you a hug. Oh no, he blows up. Never mind. It's not safer at all. Uh, 
But yeah, no, these sites that do the glowing 10 out of 10 reviews, I never know how to feel about them anymore. Uh, and, and I say that knowing full well that I really enjoyed Breath of the Wild, which did get the glowing 10 out of 10 reviews. Do you get to push this, or does this just open up? Oh, there's one on the other side as well, so who knows? Um, uh, like, I'm really not sure what's going on here. Okay, sure, just door opens up. Oh, the sword! I, I was just like, oh, that's a weird shadow. The darn sword. At least the swords don't take too much damage, and they just dance around. There's nothing really too much about them. I thought he just reflected the lightning. I was like, what? Okay. Uh, I've still got to view the floor above as well. Not the nicest, these guys. And not the nicest, this guy. goes okay um so yeah i don't know will elden ring be the greatest game of all time maybe but you know what i also saw as the greatest game of all time dark souls 3 and i don't know if people will agree that dark souls 3 is even the best of the dark souls games um as someone who hasn't played any of them i don't know i can't attest to any of that but i can definitely tell you that first game has its bits has its moments Sequence completed. Finally did it. <laughs> Just got slapped by that. Jeez. That's... Yep. Okay, so I, I know where I've been. I know where I've been. Okay. So what do you get with the sequence completed? I believe, uh... Oh, I guess maybe they all line up with, like, the coffins. So all the coffins have lowered, which means I guess I go back to the bottom. Everyone loves these enemies. Except me. Uh, I think that's open. Cool, so... Yep, so that's Mondo being a nanny no sayer Uh, pretty much. Don't trust game reviewers. And especially, I guess, day one is kind of weird as well, because... Yeah, so, let me, let me go back to the performance thing. Uh, I feel like... People are having those performance issues, and perhaps day one reviewers said, oh, there will be a day one patch. And then, like, that's it? It's like, oh, okay, so we've, we, like, brush over that that's a thing, because it can be fixed. And granted, this can be fixed. I'm not gonna say that, like, you, you know, they can't fix this, because it definitely feels like, okay, it's happened at very, very specific points. Everyone loves a good vor when you see, that's, that's not a vor, that's a spawn, sorry. Wrong, wrong enemy. I appreciate the, uh, how these stages develop as well. Like, it's not just, like, one idea all the time. Oh, except I hate the green dudes. Absolutely hate them. I think they're actually called, like, Nitro Spawns as well. It's like, just... Oh, can you give me a name that, like, doesn't invoke dread? Oh, there's a bit of water down here. What could be down here? Oh, there he goes. So I believe the Nitro Spawns... Hold on, let me, let me test this. They don't explode. So they're actually a little bit cleaner than your typical spawns. Just a little bit. I don't like them. I still don't like them. This just gives them an excuse to use them more often. Ooh, hi there. And you need the gold key. That's a bit of an interesting way to, to go to it, but sure. Door's locked. This is going to be uh, the world's worst platforming level design, I swear. Because you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing here. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I want that, but I can't get it. So, 
And then this lets me swim back up, but... Or rather, not back up, but back here. So, what am I doing? I guess I go this way. Who's just dead? The knight behind him's dead. That guy's dead. That's a spawn. <laughs> I just jumped right at the spawn. Up oh, there he is. Okay, cool. And the quad is gone before I knew it. Oh well. Oh, I could do without these guys. They're not fun, those guys. I'll tell you that. It's a little skull. A little bit of a night dude in there, chilling in the nose. I'd chill in the nose if I could. There you go, good stuff. Uh, doors are locked. Doors stuck. Yeah, I don't think I've really got anything else to say about uh, Elden Ring. I guess me as a guy who hasn't played it is uh, just... I guess that, I'm a dying breed of people who haven't played it. But you know what I did play this week, and I might as well mention this one. I played a game called Bugdom. It is a game developed by three people. One guy did music, one guy did art, and the other guy did programming. And they made this game in 1999. And the game was very popular amongst Macintosh people. I actually have a mate who, on his Mac OS 9 machine, he played Bugdom and he showed me it, and it was kind of tricky. Uh, I didn't even realize that Bugdom is open source on GitHub. You can actually look it up. Hi there, boss, by the way. I feel like I should just come at him with, like, the de facto weapon of just quadruple rocket launcher. I... He's already dead. He's gone. Quadruple rocket launcher is a little too good. And they've given me anti-gravity as well, just, just to sweeten the deal. Well, that was a cool boss, wasn't it? I'm gonna stand on the Acropolis and away I go. Victory! The Overlord's mangled remains are the evidence. His evil wrath army cast out to wander aimlessly throughout time as the slipgate fog surrounds you. Thoughts rage into your consciousness. Has Quake's oppressive reign ended? Is it salvation or damnation? Which waits beyond the vortex? Another thought, not quite your own, raises through the haze. Forgiveness can yet be granted. Our master remains to absolve your sins against his chosen fall down upon your knees pray for quake's mercy what does this mean i don't know immediately chucked into the second episode we're into tempest fugit not the name of the rush song it's the rush yes sorry it's yes not rush uh off a 1980 Album drama where John Anderson refuses to sing anything but the chorus chants of yes. I never understood that one. Uh, so new episode, start off with your weapons again. Uh, I think they wanted to sweep me off my feet, but <laughs> it doesn't quite work out that way. That's okay. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I played a game called Bugdom. You can, indeed, for yourself as well. Play the game, uh, it's open source on GitHub. I don't, uh, I'm not too sure what that license was, but, uh, it's definitely sitting there. And that's the actual source on GitHub as well, so if you want to tweak stuff, feel free. Uh, what is Bugdom? It's a, uh, I'm gonna call it a platformer. Uh, and, uh, it's very... Simple. You play as a bug, the bug can kick. He's got six arms and he can only kick, and he can also roll into a ball, and roll around, and that also breaks things. There's a lot of, like, nuts to which he breaks. Also, whoa. <laughs> Nothing's worse than statue enemies as well. Even though they act exactly like these guys, but they're not, they're, they're evil statue enemies. Oh my gosh, jeez, hi. Hello there. Fair number of enemies going on here, I swear. 
Oh, yeah, they got the big knights as well. And the jumping jackalope, I swear. Oh my gosh, hi there. Lots of, lots of eels. Uh, so yeah, you can you can break nuts. The nuts will have like uh, green clovers, which green clovers give you score. Blue clovers, where if you collect four of them, they give you score. Yellow clovers, where if you collect enough by the end of the game, they give you score. Ladybugs, where if you collect enough of them, they give you score. See what I mean? Everything is score in this game. Um, and uh, your main goal, otherwise, is just to reach the end of the level. Uh, the levels have keys, or open doors, sometimes levels don't have keys. Um, and uh, that's about it, it's a real simple game. Uh, you got a couple of enemies, ants that kind of throw rocks at you, ants that throw javelins at you, um, bees, uh, like stink bugs with gas masks on, um, that one's a, an interesting one. Uh, that's a fun enemy placement with this guy, I'll tell you that. And you've still got this water down here. Where does this go? Oh, have I been here? Yeah, no, I did go here. Yeah, because this is how I answered. Maybe? I'm slightly very lost, but that's okay. Okay, I'll just go over here where the uh, lift was. I'll go up. Um, yeah, you got a handful of enemies, but uh, Nothing too too weird, and also not many you can kill. I think the only ones you can kill are these like little tiny lava bugs that appear in two of the levels, and you can indeed jump on them. And interestingly, did they just want me to telefrag that guy? I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna also telefrag whoever spawns this way. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, the game consists of ten levels. Interestingly, the first two levels are very similar in theme. They're like the the typical ant bug colony kind of level, uh, you got giant walls that block your way, and then you've got, uh, like, keys, basically. You want to get the keys to open the doors, and that's about it. You're dealing with the, uh, the, the killer ants. I don't, I guess you're a, you're a, like a little armadillo bug, a little rolling bug. I'm not really too sure what you're supposed to be, but you got a kingdom, apparently. You got a rescue. I think that's the plot. There's lots of ladybugs that need your help as well, because they're all captured. Um, I wonder if this is like off the ants bugs life kind of craze as well, just like ants are the thing. Because there's a lot of things around the late like 2000s that are just like, yeah, ants. There you go, pick up the key. Obviously, what happens? I trap you in here. So, you might be wondering what this is. This is the power shield. It's so bad. Uh, I've got the key, which means I can just drop down here and, uh, there you go. Open the door and continue on. I believe the power shield protects you from hits that come from behind? We'll see it in practice. I can't recall off the top of my head. Didn't really protect me from that one. And the shield is already failing, so... What a good item. What a great item. Uh, you can tell where this one's going. Some of these secrets are a little obvious. I'm not gonna lie, but they're pretty fun, nonetheless. This is not a secret, this is the legitimate way to continue the level. I guess that was- wow, okay, don't- don't count your chickens. It's a, it's a bit awkward up that ledge, I'll tell you that. There you go, blow everything up. One's down here as well. Uh, so yeah, so level 1 and 2 are basically that. Level 3 then changes uh, tone a little bit, where you are now um, uh, on like a river. And it's kind of interesting, the level consists of all these like lily pads that you go across. And then at some point there's just like these long sections where it's just water and the water, there's no swimming. Um, the water is just like real sluggish. You can do like this kind of jump thing to try and get past it. But uh, it's, um, you know, it, it's a bit unforgiving. Uh, but what you can do in that level is you can get these little taxi uh, bugs. You can ride on them. And they are... Uh, 
but they require a coin to get on them. So there's coins, there's a little power up in the levels, you can get them and then you can ride the little bug. And it's quite neat. I thought that was kind of neat fun. Uh, then the next level comes, this is the foot level. I, I'm just going to call it the foot level. It's, it's those giant feet. They're stomping around and they're going to crush you and it's like, oh okay. Um, there's not really much you can do about the feet other than run past them. Uh, sure, secret up here, but like, what am I doing up here? Because I haven't gotten the key yet. Did I walk past something to get the key, or...? I'm only at 53 enemies, so... Must be out the other door, because, uh... This way. But no, that's... no. Oh, down here, maybe. Maybe? This door is locked. There you go, now he's back. He's back in action. So, okay, the feet level. Uh, near the end of the feet level as well, you get to ride on these dragonflies. And it's actually kind of neat that, like, you do a, a bit of a flying tank control to fly around them. The only thing is, don't fly too high, because you end up getting uh, eaten by a bird. Nothing in the game really tells you that you were going to get eaten by a bird. You just accidentally, you know, get eaten. Oh well. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I'll note that the health in the game is kind of annoying. Again, you can't kill enemies. That means you're eternally just running away from things. It's a little annoying. You've got a stamina bar as well for the, the rolling. And the rolling is only, uh, you know, it'll use that stamina bar. And then, um... The underwater gate is now open. Underwater gate. Whoop. Ah, this looks like an underwater gate. Oh, hi there. Lots of eels. So many eels! I appreciate the statues still bleed. Oh, hi there. I don't even see you. Okay, cool. Uh, so anyway, after that level then comes level 5. This is a boss level where you ride a bee, or ride a dragonfly and shoot a wasp nest and that's it. I think you're being attacked by wasps anyways, but like, there's not really much going on in there. You just, you just kill the wasp. Give him a piece of your mind. Um, level 6 then takes place in a little, uh, I guess a bee's nest? Bee yeah, bee's nest. Uh, you're, you've got these like little platforming bits where there's hot, uh, well, it's not hot, like honey, but it's it's honey. It's gonna kill you if you touch it. Don't touch the, the hot honey. Um, this is, at this point, I noticed that the hot honey was, um, uh, sorry, that the platforms don't drag you along with it at quite the same speed that, like, they're moving. So you've got to constantly readjust yourself on these moving platforms. Um, it's kind of weird as well. This is also, like, one of, uh, a couple of interior levels, where the whole level is just inside. Wait, 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 the door's over here. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting very lost in this level. Um, and, uh, I guess one thing to note about this game is that, like, when I say this game's primitive, it's like, you can easily, like, tell the OpenGL kind of features that they're using. Um, terrain maps were kind of a big thing back then, so it's like, oh cool, terrain maps, where the, you know, there's no caves, it's just kind of the floor is peaking up at certain points. Um, despite being a, um, a PC kind of re-version as well, uh, Bugdom does, uh, still looks like it came out for 1999 and... Also, not amazingly for 9099. Like, I guess this game looks fine. Uh, obviously, this is running the, um, you know, the 2021 fancy shader Kex version, but like, this game looks pretty decent for 1996. I don't even think it does, like, draw distance fog. I think it is, like, pretty, pretty, like, authentic in how it goes before. I swear, Sierra Sam did the same kind of, like, catch on, on you, where it's like you walk through a door, enemy in front of you, and an obvious, like, room closes behind you. This game, I swear. This expansion. Look at this! That's right! There's another boss, why not? Oh wait, there's two of them. Oh wait, there's three of them. I think I should just be using the, you know, the de facto kills things weapon. You defeated Quake's Guardian. Just, just the one. And then it uh, shoots the Quake logo, and then the queue goes down. And we'll call that a level. 
We got Elemental Fury 1. Everyone loves a 1. Watch for falling- watch for rolling rocks. It feels good taking out that guy in like two hits. Oh my gosh, they're going- they're going back with the- the, with the moving freaking whatever. They even give you a, a little ogre with a different um- different texture on him, which is kind of weird. I got squished! Uh, I'm back to here. Done. My bad. Um, I guess I could go right instead. Uh, so... Level 6 of Bugtum is in is in the, um... Yeah, in the bee's hive. Level 7 involves you effectively killing the king bee. Oh my gosh, this is... I can't even, like... I can't even dance around. Oh, 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 I, I'm actually, like... A slave to the, the jittering. I'm not even touching the controls now. I'm not even touching them. It's just gone. There's a reason why they don't do this too much in the base game, and that's because uh, it's very annoying. I actually cannot go anywhere. Oh my gosh. I love like this bit here. Oh my gosh, hi. Oh well. Uh... So you kill, you kill King Bee. This fight was kind of weird against the King Bee, where, um, or the Queen Bee, where the, uh, eh, 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 where the, the bee was spitting out, like, little honey pools. And the honey pools would sometimes have a, like, a little lava thing in it. But the honey pools also drastically slowed you down. And took, like, three minutes to despawn, so the boss would just keep making these honey pools. And you can barely hit him. It kind of had to get lucky, but just, you know, nothing was in the way, really. It's a bit of an odd boss, so. Level 8 takes place at night. You can tell it's night because they had the moon superimposed onto the screen at all times instead of updating the skybox to add a moon to it. They just superimposed the moon on the screen. It appears on top of you as well. It's, it's a weird one. Uh, this level introduced the, uh, the little stink bug enemies as well, that I mentioned before. Um, it's a fairly weird level because it's the only point in the game where the uh, the physics for like running up walls like actually stops you from running up them. Um, the ground is still vibrating. Can you? Can you? I'm pretty sure you can cut past these. Yeah, right at the end here. Oh my gosh, the vibrating! I swear. One more to go. I assume is this the door? Find the four switches. Okay. Oh, I have no fury, like a... Whoop. Like a vibrating floor. Oh, I got just, just on the other side of that. So, oh. Uh, level 8 I didn't have too much problems with. Uh, level 9, this is where it goes. So you're now in the, I guess, evil guy's base. That's what I'm going to call it. I don't... That was the last button, I just never hit it there. To air open. Alright, let's let's sneak up behind this. Oh. Go back up. And now I'm good. Alright, cool. And now it's vibrating again. I like this uh, two-tone idea they've got going on as well. Uh, this one's a bit of a weird one. You've got to effectively beat out four like little boss rooms. They're very, very close quarters, and there's not much room to even go anywhere in. Oh my gosh, jeez. You can fall down right down the middle. You hit, go on here, hit the button. There you go. Now I've lost nearly all my health because there's so many enemies right here. Oh, I cannot believe it. That was 12 enemies sitting right there, by the way. Oh, so you get little lightning zaps right there and there as well. And there's two sides to this as well. Oh my 
my gosh, lots of stuff going on, jeez. This door blocks, wow, I wonder. I just got a button, so three more to go. Uh, can I go down from here? Pfft, no. Uh, yeah, then, yeah, so level nine, you're in the, the evil place's base. Uh, there's just actually lava, and there's kind of really annoying, uh, bits where you've got to, um, effectively swing from some vines. Uh, swinging from the vines looks awkward, but it's actually not the worst, because the, the vines always put you basically into the next one. Um, but getting the first jump is a bit iffy, and then you've also got to make sure you hold forward, like, when you jump off it. Uh, they don't make it quite clear that you got to do that, but you do. Um, it's also introducing a feature where you turn some pumps and the water flows into the areas which stops some fire geysers. Um, just, I guess, interesting. Nothing, like, too fancy, but, you know, it's, it's neat. And speaking of neat, I don't know what was going on there, but I never hit this button, so... Go up in the exit. Cool. So now, I believe, do I stand... I go back to four, yeah. Or two. One of them. And I guess I go to the center, and now I've got a center portal, which is, indeed, the end of the level. I know, right? It's like, oh, okay. But don't worry, we've got Elemental Fury 2! It keeps going on. We gotta swim, because why not? Everyone loves a good deathmatch map turned into a real level. You open several doors, like not just one, several, bro, several. Uh, and then, lastly, level ten. You fight the big bad boss. Uh, he's pretty simple. He just uh, stands there with fire. You hit the poles, and it sprays out some water. And he is not fire for a few seconds. And you can roll into him. Uh, all of the bosses, well, not all, but like the the level seven and level ten bosses require you to roll into them. And uh, I mentioned stamina is a little limited, so you have to duck out to the fortunately respawning uh, health power-ups around the outside. Uh, but other than that, I kind of did beat it in two hours. It wasn't There wasn't too much to really do in the game. Like, once you get to the end, it basically just accumulates a score and goals of the day. It's like, good on you. You got 192,000 points. And I was like, cool, okay. And, uh, and that was it. But it's an interesting piece of history, I feel. Because I, like, I remembered the game. And that's a weird one as well. The fact that, like, I remember it. Like, must have left some kind of impact. I think I really liked, um... Like, I guess I really liked the rolling aspect. It was quite neat. Even though you don't get to use it too much. Um, because you go on a bit too fast. It's really hard to, like, steer it. Um... And it's also, uh... I never really remembered that uh, you couldn't fight anyone. Like, everyone would just take your hit hits and then get back up immediately. You can knock them down and they'll all get back up immediately. Uh, I really like these uh, hit all the switches type levels, don't they? Like, they've done a fair number of them. Uh, so, that one I've pressed. That one's not one of the switches, and that one's one of the switches. Which means maybe it's down in the center. Oh, that's right! Ceiling water. Everyone loves ceiling water. Ceiling water is cool. It's when the water defies gravity and just you swim down out of it. Very, very nice. List your favorite game in the comments of what... That is crazy gravity water. Oh, no. Do people do that? Like... Like, midway through the video, they're like, Oh, but if, by the way, feel free to like, subscribe, and comment to get more of this amazing content. And you, they'll say that in, like, the first, like, minute of the video, and you've never, like, you've never watched any of their video. Um, and they just, I, I feel like it's purely from persistence if, like, you can, you know, you watch, like, the ten of their videos, and it's like, oh, okay, after the tenth time. He did say please. He did say I should like, subscribe at this point. Um... <laughs> I never really do that, because I never really know how to, like, play with engagement. Mostly because, like, I don't like and subscribe, so I don't really like encouraging it. Because, I don't know, it doesn't work for me. Do what you like. Oh, who wants a lava monster? He throws things at you past the poles. Alright, okay, get him with the good old-fashioned killing weapon. 
There you go. It takes five multi rockets. Three more to go. That's right. Oh, who did that? Who who opened the floodgates? The AI does not know what to do with like varied floor like this. The nav meshes don't quite work, even though the um, you know like you as a player figure it out. Uh, that's something I guess they needed to figure out later on. But ah, okay, here comes another one. It's interesting that like this episode's got like the kind of mini boss style enemies all of a sudden. Like we've had the little you know the sand dudes at the beginning. Now these guys. It's weird because the first episode, like, it's just got the one boss at the end. So, very interesting one. But that's one thing I like about Quake is that, like, you can really play upon its mechanics. There's like a lot of Dooms, you know, Dooms are Doom likes. Everything in Doom kind of feels like Doom. Like even Strife feels like Doom. No matter how fancy of a structure they manage to apply to Doom, you know, you have NPCs with dialogue. You have a hub area, you have, um, currency. Uh, and then you add, like, branching storylines. Like, there's legitimate, like, choices matter kinds of stuff going on in Strife. That game is great. If you've never played it, please play it. Um, it's, uh, on... I'm not sponsored, I swear. But, like, legit. Uh, that game is great. Just a Doom Engine game. And Night Dive's done a, a, a good, um, release port of it as well. I wonder if I just... No, no. I, that opened up that. It's a very interesting level as well. Oh, there's one more. Because it, it started off with the swimming part as well. Like, yeah, these levels are interestingly, like, varied. They've got, like, bits to them. You've opened the exit teleporter. Of course, it's the Quake logo. Why not? And now I go. The curse of Osiris. That's right, 112 enemies. On normal, mind you. On normal. So you know I'm in for a treat. Well, if the 112 enemies are these guys, then we've got nothing to worry about. Really hate this guy. I don't like this guy. He smells really bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, Buckton was a weird game. But I liked it. I liked it. It's, it's charming. Um, Osiris's temple awaits. I love the face as well. Like, having a texture that's at least like high resolution enough. Lots of these dudes all around, I'll tell you that. Oh, hi. There you go. Uh, down it goes. It's not even a secret. It's just, just a hole. Yeah, okay, did you remember it? I wasn't even looking. Listen, at, le at least that's something kind of neat. Okay, he's coming. He's coming at me fast. Jeez. And they keep chasing me. Stop. I'm in a relationship. You can't do this. Uh, but yeah. Other than that, I haven't really played too much this week. I'm at the the nearing the endpoints of Dragon Quest Nine, which. It's a game that's just like layer upon layer of mechanics. I'm now at basically uh, grinding the legacy bosses. So the game's got this uh, thing where very, 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 very late in the game, uh, you've got dungeons that consist of only a boss that used to appear in a previous Dragon Quest game. Uh, obviously with a bit of a varied moveset. Um, you beat the boss and then the boss asks for you to give it your experience. If you do that, uh, the boss levels up and becomes just a little bit stronger in terms of like the damage it does, the uh, the damage it takes, uh, it's got a little more health, um, and uh, as you keep increasing the level of the boss, it actually starts dropping different rewards, and sometimes at some point it starts to drop a reward for a map for another boss. 
And so you get to fight all these like neat little bosses like that. Uh, and uh, look at this guy just chilling here. Uh, and uh, in doing so, you actually unlock some uh, some little costume sets as well. Uh, complete the maze. Come on, come on! You gotta complete the maze. You can't just exit now. Um, so yeah, you can get these little costume sets from the from the bosses as well. Uh, so ultimately, me going for my remaining retro achievement set, I've got just a handful of achievements left. Uh, it's all hinging on uh, I need to uh, get pretty much every item and do every crafting recipe. And also complete the Beast Diary, except all that remains is me fighting these bosses, basically. So that's simple enough. Uh, but it's interesting that like I'm in this kind of like last bit where yeah like at this point after doing every quest like yeah no you've pretty much maxed out every character by now so now it's putting it to the test it's using what skills what kinds of class lineups what kinds of strategies do you pull off uh, what kinds of equipment do you wear because sometimes you want to wear the defensive equipment and sometimes you want to wear the equipment that doesn't protect as much but it does protect you from status effects or things like that and then like oh do you protect your um your healer do you like adjust the mobility a little bit um there's a bunch of like interesting kinds of uh uh i guess questions that like you gotta pitch to yourself you gotta ask and and figure out and i guess that's the best part about super boss kinds of kinds of gameplay is that you really get to use the game for for all of its mechanics unfortunately dragon quest is a uh, uh, very um generous game like uh you can't make a wrong move you can always work back towards it so in, in my case it's like well you can obviously get every skill possible so look at this guy uh that's a that's a tasteless joke i could make so just imagine i said it oh gosh they're giving me the belt they gave me the belt i can't jump or i can jump but i can't get down and they lock you in the room. Just nice level design. Good on them. Oh, and they gave me my favorite enemy. Well, at least the thing doesn't do a ton of damage. Not like the other ones. But it's still, it's just like, oh, I'm bouncing around. And then the little wall opens up and it's just like, ah, oh, yes, the worst enemy to fight in close quarters. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, nah, I don't really know how much to say more of Dragon Quest IX, because I wonder if uh, people are getting tired of me bringing it up every time, but I mean, that's what you get when you got a long RPG, and especially a long RPG with a lot of content in it. It just keeps, you know, you keep uncovering just a new thing. It's like you start off the game, you're like, okay, you're going around, you're learning how, how the game works, and then suddenly it, um, oh, this thing! Yeah, there's a, there's a new enemy as well, again, by the way. Little, little mummy. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, did I already kill him? I killed him. Now he's opened up. I wonder as well, I didn't go over here and like, yeah. A little bit of the goods. Nothing too much, but just a little bit. This lift is not active. Pfft. Everyone loves their close quarters Egypt level, don't they? I mean, it is Osiris. It is an Egypt level. I, I'm actually in Egypt. They definitely went, you know, out of their way. Some of the other levels look just like other Quake levels, and this one, I'm like, yeah, it's Quake, but they've, they've got the Egypt theme to it. They know what they're doing. And there's a dude following me yet again. Isn't there... Come at me. I guess he's up there. I'll, I'll face him in a moment. The passage is closed. I think I just hit him with the rockets. Oh, what a what a fun angle you came from. So uh, that opens up this like little tiny floor here. It's a bit of an odd one. And this lift goes down as well to basically where you were. I know, it's very confusing. Do you shoot these? No. I shot something in there. Okay. 
Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm... I feel like, uh... Ultimately, to harken back to my original point on Elden Ring, there's a lot of games. You don't have to... My right ear loves this music, apparently. Wow. You don't have to really feel... and, and don't, don't feel like you're missing out if you don't play a game day one. I feel like that's the best thing. Uh, just, you know, play a game when you feel like it. And play the games that you like. Don't feel afraid to play the same game again. Don't feel afraid to be pressured into 100%ing a game. Or really anything about it. Just, you know, you do you. That's, that's what you are. You're a game-playing machine. Uh, I think, ooh. Nah, okay, I figured it out. You go around the, the other side. So, this way. Yeah. Platform, and then, nope. I botched the jump. You gotta do, like, two laps around this as well. It's very, like, disorienting. Oh, Come on, come on. Okay. I'm not helping my case. I'm not helping my case. I just keep going round and round and round and round and round and round. Oh, okay. I quick save there, so I don't have to. I don't have to run, but I still have to nail the jump. There we go. First try. You saw it here first. It's a weird ledge up there, but sure. I need the health. Uh, so now that I was down there. What am I doing in this room? I just kind of activated some. Oh, maybe activate the lift. Ouch. There we go. Bit of a confusing level, I'll tell you that. And it's a long one as well. Everyone loves a long level. Oh. I've opened several treasure rooms. I swear I was in some of these treasure rooms as well earlier. I really want to use the... The uh, rocket launcher more, but alas, they don't. It's not much space to use it, so I guess I'm just going up now. And then wailing all my health away. Oh, I flicked too hard. This feels like a perfect opportunity to annihilate individuals. Oh, the rocket launcher is so good. I can never get over it. So good. Uh, yeah, I, like... I guess uh, we always run into this conversation of uh, playing games day one. Well, I can safely say as someone who kept uh, joking about Grid Legends as well. Listen, at least Grid Legends works. But I also don't think people like it anywhere near as much. From the looks, Grid Legends is a... Uh, Another grid game. It, it's just another grid game. And I always scratch my head because I'm like, is this one like, this one's like, it's got half the number of reviews on Steam as Atelier Sophie 2. If you've never heard of Atelier Sophie, ah, you see what I did there. Get him out of here. Alright. Quad damage gang. Oh. Are we adjusting the walls on this one? Okay, do they want me to like leave out this way or nope they don't because that's the eight that's the opening of the level. Wait no. You changed the blocks, yeah. Round the block. Maybe that's the trick, you gotta exit the level and we'll exit the area and then walk all the way back. What's the point of the quad damage if it's just like Just do this, yeah. Yeah, what is actually the point of the quad damage if it, you know? He can't even use it. Alright, this level should really be wrapping up soon. So I assume center doors. Walk around the center doors. And how many of these dudes did you ask for? All of them? All of them. Let's see if I can fit my way back around it. There you go. Get rid of them. Throw them out. 
super duper powered grenade launcher. The Guardian Awakes! That's right, it's the same guy from earlier. That's right, it's another one of the same guys from earlier. I think they realize like how good this uh, thing is. This guy's got a bit more health, doesn't he? And he's dead. I think he's just got like a little hallucinogen, hallucinogen? Illusionary, let's just say that. Ride this to salvation. Cyrus's pyramid has been conquered. There it is. I got the pyramid. And they killed one last guy. Cool. There we go. Into the pyramid. Long level is finished. So now, the wizard's keep. Because of course, there needs to be a wizard level. Why not? And we gotta reuse the book textures and have little space marines again. Circle straight in the sky, but yeah. Uh, any other news? Any other news? I think that's about it. Only other thing I'll say is, uh, as as someone who's been following computer part prices and all that stuff, they're getting better. They're getting really good. There's like a real crazy good deal on um, Shopping Express, not sponsored. Um, like for a 5600x, and I'm like, holy crap, that's great. Uh, so. And uh, I think like TechFast, not sponsored, has a uh, like a $1,200 3070 Ti available, um, and I'm just like, you know, that's that's really getting to to better prices. We've been we've been caught out for so long because of the crypto stuff, and then the shortages on top of that. And now, I, like, yeah, the world's still in a bit of a weird spot, but uh, you know, at least at least computer parts are coming back to to people, so that's that's good. There's a little spiky corner, isn't this? You know what's kind of weird? I'm remembering this expansion way more than I, like, thought I would have. Like, I remember the weapons a bit more. I remember the, um, the levels a bit more. Um, let's see, key here. Oh, get a little bit of mouse pad burn, moving it a bit too much. Um, that's how I'm showing my age, I swear. Uh, this is not even the right key for that one door. That's for this door. Is that how I show my age? By showing that I bruise easily on my own keyboard? I've been considering getting a new keyboard, because I've got a Corsair K95, and it's great. It does a little bit of, like, double typing. Um, I've gone through, like, so many, and it's still, like, not immune to it, but, like, the, this is the best I've got. I'm like, I'll, I'll stick with it. Um... The RGB is nice, although it's definitely like, you know, if you don't program, you're not going to find much use for the RGB. Like, legit. Do you, um, or I guess if you look at the keyboard, or you bring it at, like, lands or something. Uh, I never use the macro keys. I never want to use the macro keys, and I even mentioned I got a stream deck, and I still don't use the buttons on it too much. I definitely use it for streams. It's very nice for streams. Like, it's very nice being able to just, like, swap transitions and all that stuff. But, uh... Or mute parts, or just start stop the stream. Like that's great. Um, but honestly, like outside of stream deck stuff, haven't had too much use for it. It doesn't. It doesn't really have a ton of utility, I find. Um, but that's just because like I'm usually one to learn shortcuts and you know play DDR on my keyboard. Not actually play step menu on my keyboard, but you know what I mean. Like learn the shortcuts and learn kind of how it goes. Like I learned um, today that uh, uh, Control Shift. A in Chrome opens up the little like down arrow thing to the right of your tabs and immediately focuses the search your tab uh, name field. So because I, I always have too many tabs. So being able to search like my tabs by name is really, really nice. And uh, having that just like hard on a shortcut is really cool. Um, I guess just right now I'm using F5 to to shortcut to quick save but like again it's just like I love learning a shortcut like that um something something changed by hitting this button and I'm really not too sure what just changed but I'm gonna now wander back and I'm gonna hopefully find an enemy because yeah this whole area looks like I don't know it's kind of done so it must be back in like um this room no I opened something up I remember, again, like, having difficulty, like, remembering what even triggered on this level. That guy's just always been there, I guess. 
Because, like, this goes back up to basically the side of the level. There's nothing to it unless, like, I'm going over here. So, okay, I'm, I'm wasting time. Cool. Good stream. Okay, so it's definitely not over here. So then we've got this, which is a door. This, which is an altar. Uh, only thing I can think of is this is a cheeky area, but let's go up to the top. Get my way out of here. So I, I stood here and then I got the key, and that was that. And this feels like it should... Okay, sure. Cool, I'll accept that. Not really too sure what I'm going to use this on, but sure. Um, maybe it's a thing upstairs, because I haven't gone back upstairs. Okay, you lose a point nerve software- oh, okay, just here, I guess. Yeah, okay, definitely here. You lose a point nerve software, uh, slash rogue entertainment. You really don't get much time out of the power-ups, because the levels- once they start getting a bit bigger, the power-ups don't- don't quite last. One more of the buttons to go. Uh, I don't even know where I hit the button, but I assume it's just going to be up here. There's a bit of an interestingly uh, maze-like level, like legit. Like, did magicians back in the day? Because magic was real back in the day. But like those like wizards' towers, it'd always be like very like wonkily designed. Is that like a feng shui thing, or is that like a just, you know, they never really liked their carpenters too much. Because I swear, like, there's so many, like, fantasy buildings with just, like, what is this? Like, what is, who did this flooring? This is very unsafe. You would not, you would not hire someone to, to do your floor like this. And yeah, okay, so that wanders around, and... Okay, outside access areas are now open. What does that mean? What does any of this mean? Because I've also got the key. Who knows? Okay, oh, 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 I see. Alright, time for rocket spam. Rocket power. Love the rocket. So good, so good. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh gosh. Alright, I got I got a small story to tell and someone's gonna tell me I'm very weird on this one, but uh so uh I ate a bit of weird bacon last week. Uh or rather Friday. I think it was Friday. And I didn't realise it was weird bacon until I was like, oh this tastes a bit funny. Pull the the packet from the trash. Uh yes expires the 18th of February. This is the 25th I'm eating it on. Uh, like I cooked it, I guess is that, but the bacon had expired by a fair bit and I was eating it. So I'm thinking like, oh no, am I gonna like, you know, gain superpowers, something like that. Uh, but for the moment, it was okay. And then since, like I didn't have any runs or anything, but then since I've started feeling very itchy all over and I'm like, oh, is that the bacon talking? Is that the bacon making me itchy? Can't believe it. So, so rule of thumb, don't eat your bacon if it's expired. It makes you itchy, apparently. Because that's obviously what made me itchy. Just the bacon. Uh, so anytime you see me stop, by the way, it's because I've taken my left hand off the keyboard and scratching my head or something like that. Um... Yeah, you because know, I realized, like, it might be noticeable that I just stop. And, uh, it's purely because of that. I'm not even, like... I'm not, not even looking up secret levels this time around. There's no secret levels to secretize. Look at this guy, he's running at me. Definitely this, uh, this expansion is, um... It's quite curious. Like, it just kind of keeps going. Okay, now I'm back here, but... Oh, okay, I had to go through all... Oh, hi there! Hi there! <laughs> I didn't even... Yeah, okay, cool. That didn't even click in my head. Oh, let's get around here. Where is he going? There he is. Big guy. Big guy. Big guy. And he's gone. He's got huge guts. There's his head. 
don't be the kind of guy who does this. Like, yeah, I guess they modeled an area down there, but there's not too much down there. Now I go. Bit of power-ups, for good measure. Into the Quake Portal. Haven't even counted how many levels I've still got left, so... We've got Blood Sacrifice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do them all this stream, because we're almost near the end anyways. Maybe this is the second last level, I think. Top of my head. Or third last. 52 enemies, so it can't be too long. Obviously the whirring is great! Everyone loves the whirring! What even is it? Who knows? Quake was not designed to have background noise. Ah, everyone likes a little foresty area. Ooh, the itch. <laughs> it was right on my knee. Ah. <laughs> I hate the itch. I hate the itch. It's terrible. It's terrible. Okay, you'll need the silver key to get in there. There's a lot of, like, strange verticality going on there. Ah, oh, I fell for it. Um... But yeah, yeah, I I am liking this expansion a bit more than the last one though. The last one, like, at least it doesn't have the, um, the, the mines. You know, the, the mines. Press this button. Oh, 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 I'm out. Cool, okay. Like, the, yeah, the mines were just the worst on the, the last expansion. Like, the floating things that just would kill you immediately, so. Good thing this doesn't happen. Too bad it does have a... Killer ceilings, apparently. What did I hit? I, I don't know what I just hit, but now I gotta wait for this to do its rounds. Climb back up to the ceiling. This music is very involved as well. There we go. Rocket launcher. You seem to get the upgraded versions of the weapons, like, real quick as well, so... It's a curious expansion on that one, but... I really want to hug, and I really want some health. Okay, there's some health there, but... I could have put this in a, <laughs> a bit of a more convenient spot. Okay, we're good, we're good. Look at these little uh, tiki skulls in the back. Tiki skulls, like, they're just skulls. I don't know anything about, like, Aztec things. You know one thing I found out the other day? Was that the Mayans... Like, it I didn't even click in my head, but it's like, the Mayans were founded in the 1400s. Like, they're like the culminations of like so many things. So like, when people talk about the, like, the Mayan calendar, and it's like this like mystical thing predicted ages ago, and it's like, yeah, I mean, the Mayans were pretty recent in the grand scheme of things. I'm like, that's pretty, that's really neat. Just like... Something, I don't, I don't know, because like, the Mayans are so exotic. Same thing with Aztecs, same thing with Incans. They're all really exotic. But, like, it never clicks in your head, like, when things happened in history. The Mayans being in the 1400s, like, really throws me off. And someone's gonna look it up on Wikipedia and actually go, like, Oh, it's actually, like, the 1100s, and I'm like, oh, no. It was ve sometime very recently, like, I would have imagined ages ago, but, I mean, granted, 600 years is ages ago, but... You know, like... We were discovering America in the 1500s, weren't we? So... Although I guess we discovered the... Well, actually, even then, like, we discovered the Mayans very close to when they, you know, existed. One more to go. One more to go. Oh. Okay, the lift is now active. I just had to smack my head against the wall. Uh, that's the one more to go. It's over there. So I assume if I go up here, then I'll circle around. Oh yeah, there's buzzsaws everywhere. There they go. Oh my gosh, I just got pajujud. Okay, hi. 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 I guess you need him to hit you for 10 just to be able to stop that. Cool. This room looks familiar, doesn't it? I'm gonna hit this button, and, uh... That door opens. And I guess I open up the other side, so I walk my way around. 
There you go. <laughs> Too many weapons now. Too many weapons, legit. That weapon wheel has seen better days. It's a little bit hard to even know what you're even highlighting with the weapon wheel. <laughs> but, you gotta do it for the console people. I know one person who has played this game on the Switch. And you gotta do it for him. It's not- it's honestly not the worst way of going about it as well, because then you can still do- Because, like, before the weapon wheel, it used to be, like, D-pads. And it was like, well, you could only really have eight weapons. I feel like, was it Ratchet and Clank kind of did that first? Like, the eight weapons in the eight directions on the D-pad? Maybe there were some other games at the time. One, two... Where did- oh, hi there. I kind of just defected to that, because like 7 is the rocket launcher, it's a bit far over for my left hand to handle. Yeah, I like how there's like these ogres that shoot the different grenades, but there's so few and far between, and honestly, like, you've got better tools as well to take out these guys. Like, look at this, I've got a hundred shots on that. You can't do anything about it. There's too much ammo, like, legit. Oh. Gonna get my butt absolutely torn by that guy, though. I swear. Oh, I didn't even kill you. Amazing. Just like, oh, deep. Just scrolling. I'll figure it out. I love the power shield. It's so bad. Twice in one stream, I did it. I mean, it would be the only war, be the only stream with that, with the power shield though. Oh, more killing me, boys. That that guy is having a field day right there. Did I spawn anything behind me? What, what just opened up? Who knows? Well, the sequence is complete, which means a portal in the center where you can get a key. Wonderful, wunderbar. Gosh, dodging things all over, death traps all over, enemies around the corners, and back up to the very beginning of the level. What a bizarrely, like, structured, chaotic level. Good thing there's no, like, hidden little end boss kind of enemy. There's that guy, I guess he's just chilling there, but that's okay. There's a quake portal. Oh, did we ask for another one of these enemies? Just, just another one. Break side priestess, no more. Those little illusory ones, uh, losers, if I may, uh, I may proclaim. So okay, game, game's done, right? I did it. Now we've got the last, the last bastion. That's the one. <laughs> Oh my gosh, did you see that? The dogs! From base Quake! They're back! They did it, they finally put in the base game dogs. We got swimming, we got more eels. 103 enemies, so it'll be a bit, but... We'll see how it goes. So yeah. Uh, well, hazard suit, but you don't need it right here, do you? You can just... Can I jump this? Nope. Can I jump this from here? A b abysmal effort on my end. I'm just curious. Mmm, it's a little too high. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna chance it, so... Everyone likes a castle level. That's what, yeah, why, why chance it when you can just, you know... Get there anyways. I love the power shield, it's so bad. They really love these things. They I don't really know if they put the enemies in the right spots. But there's definitely a bit of the death trap business going on. I'm gonna take the lightning one. The lightning one seems cool. Again, yeah, I remember this level like quite a bit. It's bizarre. Very bizarre, so that's a sign of a good DLC. You did it. You did it, Nerve. You did it. 
I keep crediting Nerve for, uh, like the old company name. Getting ogred. Okay, 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 no, 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 no more funny business. I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna get down to the bottom. What is going on over there? Oh, kill teams. I thought that was a really weird looking enemy over there. Oh, 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 yeah, I forgot swords exist. Who put the swords here? Just kill the swords, I swear. I'll never get over that. This is the like, funniest enemy in the entire game. I love how not only do you have a hundred rockets, by the way, you have a hundred of the multi-rockets, like, just... How can you cram more overkill on one weapon? That's just crazy that, like, suddenly now, I'm not afraid of, like, those guys. Blue key, blue key, everyone likes the blue key. Uh... Whoop. More dogs. I do appreciate more dogs. Always a good sign. Alright, now these things are completely out of phase. There we go. More dogs! This is Death Corridor. Oh, oh. I, I appreciate that I, I got a little stuck on the floor. Oh no, I'm still stuck on the floor. Okay, okay, cool. What's the reason for coming all the way over here to the Death Corridor? Guess you get this. And he can do a jump. Join the zombies. Oh yeah, also good meme. Like, give you the, the lightning weapon again. I think I got them all. I'm not too sure who I'm hearing in this one, but sure. One more to go. Round I go. There you go, I've opened the door. Good on me, I'm a successful human being. With eels! Eels! Again! Everyone loves the eels. But you know what's exciting? Shadow Warrior 3 comes out very soon. That'll be neat. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, I got. Oh, hi, <laughs> hi there. Hello, hello. I guess to be a bit retrospective on a uh, on February. February is always the shortest month, but I don't know. I feel. Oh, I can buy some. You didn't even. You didn't even list a link. How are you scamming me? If you didn't even list a link, buy followers, primes, and viewers on viewers shop. I, I shall take that in mind. Take that in mind, my dear lad. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. You always feel like you're safe, and then BAM! Guy wants you to buy some followers. Can't believe it. Uh, but, nah, yeah, February's been a... a weird month. It's been very rainy. Like, weather-wise, like, legit, it's been very, very horrendous. Uh, I remember, um... Well, like, Creek got, f uh, very flooded, like, last Monday, wasn't it? Yeah. And, uh, and now Queensland's suffering some real bad ones. Um... But also, it's just like, yeah, it's February. It's a bit of an odd month for that to happen, I feel. I guess La Nina season, anything can go. I'm just wandering around here, but... I do need to trigger a door. Uh, lots of zombies. Lots of zombies. And then auto changing weapons. What's wrong, honey? You don't like your maze sewer level? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not one to, to to sway against sewer levels. I'll tell you that. But I'm definitely one to, like, scratch my head as to, like, how some of the level designers, uh, works out. 
Seems to work out all that way. You enjoy classic FPS much, retro gamer? I do retro game quite a fair bit. I do enjoy me this. Uh, I especially love playing games that came out well before I was very sentient. That seems to be the, uh, the thing. I love the, um, the concept, like, people will say, like, or oh, I'm a 90s kid because I grew up in the 90s or something like that. And I'm like, I am so borderline 90s because I remember stuff from 1999 and like a couple of things from like 98 as like a kid. But like, I, I, I'm i too young for that. I'm more a noughties kid. Like, like when people go like, oh, what were the things that you grew up with? And like, I guess if you said SpongeBob, it's like, well, SpongeBob is clearly like well beyond 90s. So... But then I'd say, like, first-gen Pokemon, and first-gen Pokemon is, like, a weird one, because it's, like, I experience slightly older media, I guess, compared to my age as well. So, like, I played first-gen Pokemon, and that had been out since 96, but I obviously didn't play it, like, brand new. I played it, like, a couple of years after release. Uh, I watched, like, films that obviously came out older. Um, and, like, I'll, like, my favorite film of all time is, like, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, because it's, like... And that, that film came out like 25 years before I was born. So I don't even know, man. Nearly dead, but that's okay because there's red armor. That's like the most obvious secret. I don't know what they're hiding. What are they hiding? Who knows? Hi there, I'm gonna nail this guy. Well, the nail gun works quite effectively against that guy. But so does really every weapon in this, this expansion. We got a little, little, little hole. Don't know what that's doing, but sure. Okay. Up I go. Oh, dogs. Uh, one more to go. Sure. The drawbridge is now operable. I have a Quake logo on the ceiling. Why not? I actually, I really like the, um, the, like, back when, uh, Doom maps, because you can't do, like, vertical sectors. So what, like, whenever they do an intricate pattern as part of the geometry, and it'd have to be on the ceiling or floor, you couldn't do it on a wall, because no one's going to see that. Uh, so it pulls back and suddenly here is a giant room! The lightning zaps and the drawbridge extends. And enter. Hey, everyone's favorite. How many hits does this guy take with this? More than the rockets! A little bit more than the rockets. It's a little slow firing, isn't it? I'm not as big a fan of it. It's not even the end of the level. Oh, the knives, the swords, knives are out. Catch the mouse. Did, oh, did he just dab on me? I can't believe it, he just dabbed on me. Everyone just saw that, didn't they? And, I, and then I walked into that, so that one's on me. Oop. Hi there. Nothing beats the old school way of beating a shambler, though. So now, here we are, the source of evil. Obviously... Give yourself some weapons, one monster, let's do it. Anti-grab belt. I remember this is, this is a, this is a mess, isn't it? Mostly because I keep jumping in the lava, it's actually horrendous. Also, because he keeps bumping you, but... This is certainly a boss, I'll tell you that. He's trying his best. He's trying his best to hit you occasionally with something. I feel like depending on your difficulty, he does do more damage, but, you know, <laughs> you know, you know how it'd be. And, and there he goes. I'm still kind of anti-grabbed right now, but his death somehow triggers, uh, something opens up. You know what's the best part? I didn't even save. <laughs> I, I, I watched it happen, and then I was just like, oh my gosh, the vibrations actually knocked me into the thing. The anti-grab belt, just like at its last possible hurrah, sends you to your doom yet again. What an amazing item, just an anti-power-up right there. I love how I didn't even see like the barred doors over there. I don't think this could have been avoided. I think I would have inevitably hit the lava anyways. 
Okay, they're already starting with the vibrations. I didn't even kill them yet. Oh, his head's just sticking up there. Hi. So, uh, yeah, cool. Wander out. And, uh, space? Obviously, you gotta shoot the quake symbols. Right? Oh no, not the quake symbols. The buttons? You gotta push the buttons. Obviously, uh, I fought four guardians, apparently. And then, uh, destroy the temporal energy converter. Oh. 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 And there you go. That was it. <laughs> yeah, it was a little anticlimactic, so. Finally. Oh, that, that pan. Finally, Quake's temporal teleporter yields to your assault. A high-pitched scream emits from the devastated device as stressed steel blasts outward to rock the cavern. The machine is devoured by molten lava. The ground shudders as reality shifts back to its predestined path. You run to enter the charge time pod scrambling in as the chamber closes your consciousness fades as you realize you have halted quake's plans for the dissolution of eternity and there you go hooray we did it so that's it that's uh that's Quake as of 2016, or oh, 2015. So that was the expansion by uh, by Rogue Entertainment. Came out very shortly after 1997, and then at that point, Quake 2 became a thing. And at this point onwards, Quake uh, lay as a bit of a relic in history. Like, people, of course, played it. Everyone knows Quake. But uh, that being said, Introduce 2016, when Machine Games, the developers of Wolfenstein The New Order and doing some level design work for Doom 2016, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, Wolfenstein The Old Blood, uh, in fact this came out the same year as Doom 2016, they released, uh, as a tease for the next stream, they released an expansion, Dimension of the Past. They, they made more Quake levels as a 20th anniversary, officially, in 2016. So I'll be going through that next stream. I think it's a little bit short. Last time, like, when I tried playing through Dimension of the Past, I did play through it pretty quickly. So I believe next stream, I'll do a little bit of a tease as well for Dimension of the Machine. I know this is gonna take me a stream and a half, we'll see. So if I can do maybe half a stream for, for the past, and half a stream for the machine, and then one last stream, that'd be pretty cool. But we're now past the past, if that makes sense, but we still yet to do the dimension of the past, you know what I mean? Like, like, the next stream will be something really cool. Maybe. You'll see. Anyways, with that, I would like to thank you all so very much for watching. If you did enjoy the stream, you can always follow where I stream at the same time every week. Again, I'll be doing another stream of Quake. We're almost done with it. Uh, if you didn't enjoy it, then you can still follow if you want. You can, you can come back next time and tell me how, how bad I am at Quake. Uh, until then, though, as well, uh, I may hope that every one of you stay safe. Uh, don't don't uh, jump onto things too quick, but know that your heart is always true. I don't know how to... How, it's very, very like sentimental, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. The world's a crazy place, and... Uh, Hey, if we if we take things take things chill, things work out. So that's all good. Anyways, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late. Um, and uh, brush your teeth. Does anyone have a daylight savings in the next month? Probably should watch out for that. Not us Australians, but some other people might. So have a good one. Woo!